Hello, everyone. It was it's a great pleasure to be here today, um, talking in the Austrian Developer Community Day. Uh, my name is Tiago, and I'm going to talk about how you can supercharge your applications to the global scale using Azure, and of course, using the Azure App Service. But before we start, I just have something to bring to you, and just a small icebreaker here, okay? And it just is this. If coffee doesn't work in the morning for you to wake up, you just don't wake up anymore with coffee, try this, okay? Try to delete a production resource group because if this doesn't work, I clearly don't know what works with you, okay? And yeah, this is kind of adapt from a joke around tables and deleting a table. But this actually happened, okay, to in one of my customers. Um, and then, of course, I taught him about, uh, you know, locks, okay, that you can do here. It's like a lock. It's not security, but at least this will not happen in the, um, in the future because it was an accidental um, deletion, okay? So, like I said, my name is Tiago. I work as a cloud architect and advisor for the Microsoft Cloud. Azure, it's my thing. Azure, it's my life. And I've been working with Azure since the Red Dog days, which for people who don't know, that's the code name of Azure, like 12 years ago, something around something around that. Um, I'm an Azure MVP, Microsoft certified trainer, a bunch of other stuff, doesn't really matter that much. Um, you can follow me on Tiago Costa PT on Twitter. I tweet a lot of stuff around Azure. So if you just want to follow me, uh, just please, uh, please do. It's just Azure and a techie thing here and there. Um, and I'm from Lisbon, Portugal, the sunny Lisbon, Portugal, that yeah, today is, is, is pretty sunny, I have to confess. Uh, pretty good weather. So I think after this session, I'm going for, for a small walk so that I can rejoin into the party. So let's go. What is the agenda? So I'm going to talk about this actually was a session that I create based on a real um, on a real problem that one of my customers had. So I work as an independent contractor. I have customers all around the world. And one of my customers had that problem. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about three major services, which is the App Service Traffic Manager, CDN, tons of demos, and then... We're going to close with some other Azure services that I also use to solve that problem, but I just don't have the time in 45 minutes to bring all of them here today for you guys, okay? So, but before we even start to talk about, let's talk about Azure today. So what is Azure today? And second largest cloud provider, we have tons of regions worldwide. We have, which is like 68 plus, I don't even count them anymore, to be honest. We have tons of fiber connecting all those regions and loads of edge sites. And you're like, why is that important? Well, it is important because we're talking about global scale. So having something that has this scale and I can have regions in the US, I have regions in South America, Central America, I have regions in South Africa. I have regions in Europe. I have regions in the Middle East, APAC, okay? So all of this, it is majorly important for you to be able to deploy an application that, yeah, can reach, okay, the, um, the global scale. So what is an Azure region? It's a set of data centers deployed in, within a perimeter, perimeter that, that all those data centers need to be within the same country. So sometimes, um, especially if you have, you know, like legal requirements that tell you like, oh, our data cannot leave the country. It is important to know that, yeah, if you choose, I don't know, like Sweden, uh, all the data centers are within Sweden, okay? Or if you choose um, whatever other region that exists, that, that's kind of the idea. Just watch out. Not all the regions are available everywhere. Uh, sorry, not all the services are available in all the regions. Um, and uh, so you really need to, in advance, 
um, check that. So there's a website if you search on your search engine products by Azure products by region, you get a website, there's a table, you select what's the product, they will tell you which region's data is available or not. The good thing is the ones that I'm going to talk about here today, they are available always everywhere because they are considered to be core Azure services. So for a region to be in the GA status, which is general available, they need to have, okay, all of those uh, services available. So that's pretty cool. Another map, you can see a lot of uh, circles in here. We have really a global scale. So what was the challenge? So this is my customer request. My customer got to me and said, hey, Tiago, you know, we have this web application that we have customers that need to reach that. Our customers are like literally like everywhere, mainly in Europe because we are a European company. Uh, we started here, we only doing the European market. Then we went to the US and then we had, you know, very good reception there. So our product sells a lot there. And then because of all that, the market was already stable. We already had a stable team, all of that. So let's go to Asia. And when they went to Asia, things exploded, both in Europe, Asia, US. Not only was just not the Asian market bringing new customers yet, that also worked, that also happened, but also Europe and 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 the US, the, the customer base growed like a lot. And you know, there are numerous complaints about the performance of the app because. This is a service, I can't, I can't tell you exactly what the customer is, but this is a service that people need to use their, their web application, okay? Um, and, you know, people were complaining about, oh, this is slow, you know, we can't do certain things. Sometimes they they they, they were giving some timeouts. Uh, they, they did extensive analytics on that. And the problem was, well, we are using a data center which is an on-prem data center, which is in Europe. And European customers, they don't complain that much, but non-Europeans, they do. It's not that Europeans are not picky and the other ones are picky. It's just that Europeans don't have anything to complain because the latency to get there was minimal. Uh, it happened sometimes, but it was minimal. But the other ones were not. So they had this problem. So the global experience was just not... Let's just, let's be nice. Let's just say optimal, okay? So they needed a solution like this. They needed a solution that had low maintenance. Of course, customers don't want to pay for maintenance, okay? And something that could be scalable. So I'm like, yeah, we analyze. Hey, I think the app service is a great fit for you. So we just did this. We just created, um, uh, we talk about the app service. And then I talked with the customer said, hey, look, they have this Azure app service. It's awesome to scalable platform as a service application to host web application and REST APIs, which is exactly what you guys need. Um, it supports .NET, .NET Core, Java, PHP, Python. Uh, your case, your app, um, it's .NET Core. So yeah, should be okay. Supports Windows or Linux, .NET Core it runs on both, so we can make a choice there. If you want to save money, go for the Linux route, or if you don't, they just stay on the Windows. That's not relevant for today, but there are huge savings if you go the Linux route. Just watch out for that. You don't lose that much. You lose certain things, but it's not that relevant. Um, does integration with Azure DevOps, that's what's, what they were using, but if they were thinking about migrating to GitHub, <laughs> and um, GitHub Actions was being released when when we did this. Um, so they were like considering that, but they were like, oh, let's just leave GitHub Actions to really consolidate in, 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 in something. And then, then we can think about it. Yeah, but look, it's, both of them are supported. So it's up to you to do that later, if that change later, if you wish. So no, no problem. And of course, look, there's support for custom domains. If we want to put this in a fancy website, these are the app selling points, in my view, 
for the app service, the global data center footprint that we have with Azure, hybrid support, load balancing, high availability. Um, there is like integrated load balancers on this that I don't need to configure. I don't need to do anything of that. Reduce operational costs, Azure Active Directory integration. Uh, I integrate this also with deployment slots, custom domains, integrations with stuff like traffic manager, front door. So look, we, we are more than good to go with this. So, okay, we decided, yeah, let's, let's go with that. So how do we start? So we start with an app service plan. So that's 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 how we start. So let's create an app service plan, and then we they have several apps. That's let's put the several applications inside that app service plan. That app service plan will share the compute, okay? And I can have several app service plans on one subscription. I can have plenty of subscriptions, plenty of app service plans. It's totally up to you, okay? This is just an example. I have one app service plan some applications inside that app service plan. Let's imagine that app service plan, if it's from a certain size, that tier, okay, will give you um, the size, it will give you a bunch of features that your applications can have. You're only going to pay for the app service plan per instance. And then how many instances do you have on that app service plan? Oh, three, you pay three times that, that amount. But if tomorrow you see, you know, I don't need three, two is enough because I'm not getting that much load. Sure, just go there and say, I want two. Or you can even customize this for auto scaling. But let's just get back to that in just a moment. Let's review some of the tiers that we have. So this is the tier, is the shared plans. To be totally honest, I'm not a great fan of those those two plans. Um, they run on shared uh, hosts. So the same host can be running your app, my app, everyone's app. Um, I don't like that, to be honest. Um, but, okay, there is one called the free, which is free. You don't pay. You get 60 minutes uh, of compute a day. If you spend all of that, you get an HTTP error message saying, hey, come back tomorrow. <laughs> it's not exactly come back tomorrow, but it's just like we just spent all the resources. Come back later. And uh, it, it, we know it's tomorrow. But the customer doesn't know. It's a weird message to show on a website, right? It's just, yeah, okay. I, I really don't want that. Share it is kind of the same thing. More compute because four times more, and you get custom domains. But then this is where the stuff really starts to the, the fun starts, which is the dedicated plans, basic, standard, premium, premium. We have premium V1, V2, and V3, um, and we have stuff like custom domains, SSL, TLS up to three instances, we get manual scaling. The standard starts to give us cool stuff. Like we still have custom domains, SSL, TLS, up to 10 instances, and we get auto scaling. And that's like, wow, a great feature to have because then I can create rules for this to scale, um, uh, basically to, to scale to more instances, to also scale out or scaling to less. Um, the last instances. I got back that 10 backups a day. I can integrate this with traffic manager, awesome features. If we talk about um, uh, the, the premium, I get 50 backups a day, all the other standard features that you have here. Plus I get 20 instances in the V1 up to, or I can get up to 30 if I go to V2 and V3. And also V2 and V3, they come with bigger virtual uh big vir big virtual machines okay so we have that there's this another one which is the isolated plan okay but we, we're not going to cover that but it gives you vnet isolation it gives you up to 100 instances and then a bunch of other stuff but don't want to cover that what i want to do is just jump in right now and let's do it here okay uh a demo so for that i have here the azure portal and there you go. You can see now the Azure portal. And I'm just going to create very easily a web application. So let's just jump here and let's just say, hey, web app. I'll just search for web app on the marketplace. I will find here web app should be the first one. Let's select create. And now I just need to select here. Hey, what is the subscription where I want to put this? 
And where is the, um, the resource group that I want for this? I already have this one here, A, D, C, D, to, to, to done. Um, but let's just create let's just create another one, okay? Let's create A, D, uh, C, D, 2022 demos. Okay, let's just do this one, okay? Uh, and then, hey, what's the name of the, of the app? Let's just try this to see if it is available. Ooh, it is available. And then you have the choice. Hey, what do you want to publish on this web app? I'll just say hey, .NET 6 code. That's what I want. And what is the region where you want? So the company is from Europe. So let's put this in West Europe. Let's create a new app service plan. Okay. Uh, CD app service plan. Let's just put this. And then change the SKU. This is the tiers that I was telling you about. So see here, free. This is the shared. And if you go to production, we have standard, premium, and in dev and test, we still have the B1. This is the basic ones, okay? I'll go, I'm not going to enter in lo loads of details on this. We end up with the premium uh, V2 back then. So this is the one that we selected. We can also do int continuous integration, continuous deployment with, with GitHub Actions right here on the start. We can also set up monitoring for this with application insights, which I'm not going to do that today because it's just not the purpose of, of today's presentation. Um, so I'll just say no, so that it's just like one less service that Azure needs to create for us so that we don't take, it doesn't take that much of a time for, for us. And there you go. So we are good to go. This is being created. Takes just a few seconds, to be honest, to, to create um to create this so stuff that just takes a few seconds i don't have anything ready um that done you're going to get there it's just just the azure cdn because that one takes some time to properly work um and we don't have time to wait for that so i just have that ready but all the other stuff i'm just going to do it from scratch so go to resource there you go if i browse this hey ta -da! We have a website in here. Oh, happy days, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, it's working. Okay. So, sure. Now, let's, for example, um, have this in here. I already have a website here. Uh, and let's just say... Um, Let's just say this, and now let's just put here an H3, okay? And this H3 is just to put West Europe so that we know this is the West Europe uh, site. I'm just going to deploy something so that I can have, you know, uh, something there. And why is this not working? Come on. Uh yeah, let me just go to the publishing bits in here because I already had something in here. Okay, that, that's fine. Let's just create a new one. Let's just say this. Let's just say this. And we have this in here, in here. And this is the one where I want to deploy. So this is just going to download the publishing, the publishing profile. There you go. And we click publish. And now this is being published there so that we have a website there. Of course, we do this via like Azure DevOps pipelines or something like that. That is the right way of doing that. This is just to have something in, um, in here. Okay. So there you go. So we have this and this takes a while to deploy. So I'm not going to wait for, because we are like, we, 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 we have our time. Um, a little bit, we struggle a little bit with time in this presentation. Um, and so but just believe me, you'll see in a moment, it's it's something there. I'm like, okay, great. So we have something there. And now what I want to do is I want to talk about auto scaling. I can just go there, okay, and configure auto scaling like based on the schedule or based on performance metrics because the tier that I chose is the premium, standard premium. They support auto scaling. And look, before I just explain this, let's just go back to the portal and let's just, just do another demo 
on um, on this and you're going to see that this is like awesome, the stuff that I can do with this, okay? So see, this is deployed, okay? Um, Austrian developer community, there you go. It's in year 2022, West Europe, okay? And everything is good. It's here, it's created, everything is running just fine. If we go back to the app service and I scroll down and I have this option that says here, scale out. So if I choose that option, I can select here if I want manual scaling. And manual scaling is just this. It's a slider. Hey, how many do you want? Uh, seven. Okay, press save. And bam, you have seven VMs in the back that you don't manage. Microsoft manages that for you. Responding to your web application. That's cool, but you need to come back. It's, it's a manual task. Let's be honest. I don't like that. What I want is auto scaling. So I'll just go for auto scaling. And I just say, I want to scale based on a metric and I'll just add a rule in here. And my rule is what? So my rule is something like this. Uh, CPU percentage greater than, um, just to change something, let's just say 75%. And then you have the option in here, <coughs> okay? That tells you that you're going to increase the count by one. So what you're saying is, hey, look, if the CPU percentage reaches 75% for the past 10 minutes in average with an aggregation of per minute, um, get me another, another instance. That's what you're saying. I'll say you're scaling out. What about scaling in? Well, we didn't create that rule, so let's create that one now. So add a rule. And now what I'm going to do is pretty much the same thing, but instead of greater than, I'll go for less than. And I'm just putting here a number like 35, for example. And by the way, I'm just saying 75 and 35. That doesn't mean that you have to put those numbers. This really depends on, on an app per app um, thing. So you really need to understand what is the number that you need to put there, depending on the type of app that you have. Increase the count. No, decrease the count by one. And there you go. Now we have here, okay, um, basically uh, a rule to do the scaling. Then, of course, down here, you can also say, hey, what is the minimal number of uh, virtual machines here, of, of instances? And what is the max number of, of instances? And, you know, I can do up to 30 with this, uh, but let's imagine you can't afford more than like 12. So let's just put 12 there, minimal two. You fold to maximum 12, you just press save, and there you go. You have your auto scaling rule created. You could also do it by a schedule on this if you wish. You just need to go here, add a scale condition, and for example, scale to a specific instance count, repeat specific days, and say like Friday and Saturday from this time to this time, I want five. Let's just imagine something like this. Okay, you could do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay, but. You could, you could do that. So with all of this, what do we have? Uh, what did we? What did we create it? So we have something similar to this. We, we just have just this part here, which is just the West Europe part done, so that people, you know, they just go here Azure DNS. We could have a custom domain to this, but I'm not going to do that right now. And they could just go the, over there. But the problem is I have customers also from the U.S., remember, that they complain about this. They complain, hey, Tiago, this takes a, a lot of time for us to get there. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay, let me create then a second web app, okay, but now in the U.S. So let's just do East U.S., and then I will have this, okay? So let's just um, let's just take care of that, okay? So let's just go in here. Let me create this. And now I'm going to do this a little bit faster than previously because it's the same thing, but, you know, I'm just going to create now this in, in, East, in East US, okay? So I'll just say here, hey, easy training. I'm just going to create this in here, A, D, C, D. 2022 US, for example, uh, runtime stack.net 6 region. Let's just put East US, create a new one, uh, ADCD 
US app service plan. So let's just put this, change the size. I just want this. You don't need to have the same size, but you know, this is my OCD here. And it's it's preferable to have deployment is good. Monitoring, I need to turn this off. Review and create, and let me create. Now that I have this created, I can also go to Visual Studio. I can go to this index, create something that says East US, save this, and then on the publishing, I will create here a new one. But let's we need this needs to finish first. Okay. So that I'm going to deploy that app into East US. And this is why I put there West Europe and East US. In, in, a, in the real world, you don't put that. Okay. It just doesn't make any sense to show that to your users. It's for me, just for me to show you, okay, that if we go from Europe, I will go to one. If I go from the US, I will go to the other one. Okay. I'm in Europe. So I'm going to use my internet connection, okay, to simulate the European connection. But I don't have a way to simulate a connection from the US. So because of that, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual machine here. Let me just do it like this. Virtual machine. So that I can RDP to that virtual machine. And then I can use that virtual machine as a connection from the US. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of what I'm going um, what I'm going to do. So let's just go here to demos. Let's call this VM test. This, of course, not. It needs to be it needs to be East US and not Ubuntu. Not that it didn't work, but let's just go with Windows 10, for example. And uh, or better yet, let's just go with Windows 2022. Well, that's the problem. This size is not is only supported for Gen, and this is Gen 2. Oh, okay. So let me see all the images, and let me just search here. Windows Server 2022 Data Center Gen 1. There you go. I don't want to look for a size, you know, that supports that. Just doesn't matter for our demo. So there you go. There you go. You never do this, which is allow RDP on a public IP. Okay, but again, like I said, this is just a demo. So moving on. Okay, review and create. And oh, there's a validation error. What is the validation error? There, there, there is nothing here, just the portal being the portal. See, now it works. Okay, so this happens in the, in the Azure portal sometimes. Okay, so now this is creating the Azure virtual machine. Now that that is doing, let's create here the publishing for this so that I can publish this site in the, in the US web application, right? So when we do this, ta, 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 and there you go. Now I have to click publish. And there you go. Okay. So now this is publishing and the VM is creating. So we have the two things being done. Uh, and in the end, we are going to have this, right? Two web apps. But now how does my customers, okay, decide that they go there or they go there? Because... Technically, now I have two different endpoints. I have like one endpoint here for this. I have another endpoint for this, and I need to give them two URLs. Like, oh, you're a customer from the US, right? So you have to go to this website. Oh, you're from Europe. You have to go to this. That's just not scalable. In first, I want a single endpoint, and I want then that endpoint just decides where it should serve the website. If it should serve the website from West Europe or from East Europe. Uh, US. How can I do that? Traffic manager. You can also do it through front door. Front door, what he uses in the back is traffic manager. So I prefer just to explain the core, the core service. Traffic manager allows you to do user traffic distribution. I can have endpoints that could be like a public IP address that can even be an on-prem okay, IP. It could be an app service, static web app. There's plenty of options in, in all of this. 
what are the benefits of this? Improve the availability. This is a critical application or application, okay? Uh, responsiveness, because we go to the higher performance application. So we're going to, oh, where is the lower latency for you? Oh, it's that one over there. So we just go there. So distribute traffic for large complex deployments. You can also do this for combining on-prem with cloud-based applications if you wish to, et cetera. So what do you create? I create, okay, my traffic manager profile. And I'm going to create one in just a moment. Then I choose the load balancing method that I want. And look, I have plenty of load balancing methods. I have like geography where you can just definitely say, hey, if the traffic comes from this country, you should go to that endpoint. If it comes from that country over there, I, I, I will go and I will redirect you to the other endpoint. You can do priority, which is all the traffic goes to this endpoint. If that endpoint is not responding, oh, there's a secondary endpoint here. So all the traffic then goes to the secondary endpoint. Or my favorite, which is the performance. That's the one that I'm going to use, which is I just tell them there's these two endpoints in here. You decide where I should go based on my IP address. So based on the user IP address. And this will, will basically do that. But what happens is something like this. So what happens is I have my traffic manager um, and I have my user here. Number one goes to a DNS server uh, and it just types in the browser www.azcontoso.com. It gets there. Oh, there's a C name here. You should go to that traffic manager. So you're like, oh, great. So let me go, number three, to that traffic manager. So they reach the traffic manager. Then... The traffic manager, based on that routing algorithm, based on the endpoints that he has, he has those three endpoints in here, and he decides, well, you know, you should go to this one here. Okay, so the response, this is a DNS response, it just tells you, you should go there. But then it's the browser that goes there directly. And there's a TTL, a time to leave for that response. And during the TTL time of that, you always go like this. You never come back to the traffic manager. When do you come back to the traffic manager? When the, that TTL, the time to live, expires, then sure, you come back to the traffic manager. Traffic manager then does the decision again and then tells you go there. And then you keep coming there during the time where that message is valid. Okay. So this, this is it. So let's just, um, uh, not this, let's just do then here. Okay, uh, a demo with exactly that. Okay, so let's just go to the resource in here. In here, I'm just going to create a traffic manager. Okay, the traffic manager profile. Come on, there you go. Let's select create. You know, let's just say uh, ADCD 2022. Traffic manager. Net routing algorithm there are more okay like performance is the one that i want i want to drop it in here i want to drop it there and i just click create as you can see creating an azure traffic manager it is okay really really simple uh let's just connect to the vm because the vm takes some time you know to to connect so let's just uh because it needs to create a user profile stuff, etc. here. So let's just do that. Uh, student. And I have my password, which is bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Bullet point. There you go. Okay. So this should, this should connect. So let's see. The traffic manager here is created. <coughs> I can go to the traffic manager. Second step create the endpoints. So let's go to endpoints and let's create. I'll just call this Europe. It's an app service. And hey, what is the app service? It's that, the app service. This is it. And I create the second endpoint. I will call it USA. And I'm just going to do the same thing. But of course, the target resource now, it's going to be the other, the other web application. Come on. 
We only have 10 minutes to finish this. I don't have time to wait for the portal to finish stuff. Come on. There you go. Come on. There you go. USA and app service. And I choose this, which is the web app of the US. So now you see this is monitoring is checking the endpoints. This now takes a couple of minutes to, to monitor that. And let's just review this. I have this website here. Okay, this is the European one. I have this one here. That is the East US one. And if you can see, right, there's a difference on the URLs. And we don't want this. We want just a single uh, website that just we just do like this and it redirect us to one or to the other. So with that in mind, let's me use here a custom domain. And we're even going to configure here a custom domain for, for this, okay? So I'm going to this azcontoso.com. It's basically a um, uh, domain that I use for, for my demos. I'm going to create a record set on this, okay? And I'll just call this ADCD to say 22. And this is going to be a C name. And it's going to be a C name for this DNS that you have here. And of course, we need to take the HTTP out of the way. It's fine. There you go. Okay. So if you type adcd2022.azcontoso.com, okay. You should be then redirected to one web app or to the other. There is a catch now here, which is I still need to do one extra step, which is go to the web apps, okay? And in each one of the web apps, I need to add the custom domain. So custom domains, let's add the custom domain in here. And let's just say adcd2022.azcontoso.com. Okay. Validate this. Green, green. We like green. And there you go. We have not to need to refresh this. We have here this. I can add a binding. I have also a app service certificate. So I can even configure HTTPS on this. So see, really, really easy on this. This is another service called the App Service Certificate, so where you can buy certificates. I have this certificate, which is a wildcard uh, certificate that I bought. And there you go, green. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the US web app, which is basically, again, add a custom domain. We enter this in green. We add the custom domain on this. And bam, 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 refresh. There you go. Add the binding. This is the binding. That's the domain. Import app service certificate. We select the certificate and we do the binding now. Bam, bam, bam. So, see, loads of stuff here, but this doesn't take that much of a time, to be honest. So this is already good. It says degraded, but look, to be totally honest, if we refresh this a couple of times, it will show online. And it most probably this is online. There is a, a certain latency on showing the monitoring status on this. So I'll believe that this is online. I'll remove all the browsers there. And now I'm going to do this. So adcd2022.azcontoso.com and ta-da! It's working. We have HTTPS here. See, connection is secure. We can see this. How oh, awesome. See? Uh, and it, it's fully working. And of course, because I'm based in Europe, he found traffic manager found out that this is the fastest one for me. So I'm like, sure. Okay, great. So now let's open the virtual machine that I have here. And this virtual machine that we have here, don't forget, is running in the U.S., in a U.S. data center. So 
Um, what's going to happen is uh, start without your data, confirm, start browsing. There you go. So now what I can do now is just type the same address. There's no difference on the URL. And this, see, shows me East US because this is a US-based customer, which is kind of like simulating, okay, um, one of those users that are in the US. They, they are being redirected to the other web app. But look, if you don't have this, I just put this as a demo so that you, you can understand, oh yeah, you're really going to that one. You're really going to that so that I can really show you. But in real life, we don't have this, okay, in the real world. We just don't use... We just don't use this, okay? So what other services did I use? So there is, so, oh, sorry. The current status now is something like this, right? So we have, you know, uh, traffic manager deciding where should we go, right? So the other service that I really love on this is the Azure CDN, Content Delivery Networks, because we had like tons of files that we need to share. That's kind of the purpose of the app. And... This could serve content from Azure storage accounts, which is exactly what we needed, uh, cloud services or app services. And the idea is let's use one of the networks that are available, Microsoft, Verizon, Akamai. They all come with different features. We really need to analyze this pretty well. Um, but the idea is instead of redirecting the users to go to that storage account where I have the data, which that storage account is bound to what? A region. Let's just say West Europe. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you the URL of the CDN. And what's going to happen is, imagine that you're this customer here in, in South Korea, and you say, hey, I want that file. Oh, sure. You're the first person to come here in this POP location. POP stands for point of presence. And what does is... I need to copy this from here, and then I'm going to cache that file here for a certain amount of time. By default, it's 10 days, but look, all this is customizable, um, and you can then perk data. There's like tons of options on, on this, okay? So for now, the time that you said, let's imagine the 10 days, that file is cached. So other customers from South Korea, they just get to the pop location, and the pop location just give them the file immediately but they only have all around the world. There is always one URL and that's it, okay? And then this is the network, the, the CDN network that takes care of all of, uh, of all of this, okay? So let's jump here into the Azure portal again, okay? And let's just see this. This is the demo that I can't do because first of all, we are really run out of time. And also because, you know, this takes some time to do the propagate, the, the propagation of the CDN. It, it can take up to 15 minutes using the Microsoft standard. What I've done is I have a storage account here, which is like a regular storage account, standard V2, local redundant storage. I went for containers. I create a demo container using the public access level of container. It could be blob too. As well, it needs to be open basically. And I put a file in here. And if you look at this file, sure, I could just you know, just do this and you can see the files, the Azure logo. Um, but if you see the URL of this, this goes to a storage account. That storage account is in West Europe. If you come from Australia, US, somewhere in Asia, that might take um, some time latency wise to get this. This is why we created a CDN. And when you create a CDN, you then create a CDN endpoint. It's pretty easy to create, just search CDN and create one. The origin of this is what? Is the storage account. And now what I can do is I, instead of doing like this, okay, I can do like this. So demo slash Azure dash, I think it's dash logo.png. And with this, I'm using that CDN. In my case, look, I'm in Europe, West Europe. I'm, I'm based in Portugal, by the way. It's it's you don't see the difference. We needed to measure this with tools, but it, it can be really, really much, much, much faster, especially if you are like far away from from the origin. So this will, and also this takes load out of your storage account. 
Um, it takes a lot of, of, of your web servers. So we have plenty of advantages on, on having this. So basically right now, we can say that we have something like this that we have here. So Azure CDN does the um, and does the, the the blob stuff here, some static content. You can just put it there and you can just distribute this through the Azure CDN. Other services that I used, store it. Yeah, we saw that right one in here, but like Redis Cache functions, Cosmos DB, SQL databases, cognitive search, front door, and we can have something like this here with like. Uh, polyglot solution here for databases, so some relational data, some non-relational data, some cache for that data in here. Um, I can have here a function app, okay? So this function app in here um, to do like running like some background tasks, uh, trigger with some other stuff. So we can we can have this in here. So it's pretty, you know, pretty useful. Uh, features that we can have here. And of course, this traffic manager can be replaced by front door. Just resources that I used on this, um, you know, like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Git, Azure DevOps, you name it. So let's just like some of the stuff that, that I used. And that's it. Okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you very much. My name is Tiago, and this is how you can supercharge your app service to the global scale.